What's up, guys? We're here. Welcome back to the channel. So today I am bringing you Barbarian Whirlwind Bleed Barb. Big shout out to Rob, man. My th this is all his build, okay? Big shout out to Rob, man. My community finally convinced me to play Barbarian, and I didn't really want to play Barbarian. I just didn't want to do it, but they convinced me to play it. So they said, "Hey, play Rob's Bleed Dust Devil Whirlwind Barbarian build." war you're gonna grind and love it so much more than heart seeker and i said all right guys we'll put it together and try help me put it together so they helped me out with the gear and all that good stuff and really helped me break down some uh key points in the build so i'm gonna break those down this is gonna be a very like front face point of the build if you want to see rob's in-depth guide to this a link will be down in the description below but I'm going to break down everything that you need for this version, some build variants and some other things just on the face. But if you want a more in-depth explanation, then go check out Rob's video. All his stuff will be down in the description below. Shout out to Rob. Barbs unite. Barbs stronger together. Okay, so let's break down these skills and everything you need for the build. Skills, gear, paragon, etc. And some options to swap out and change. So this is Whirlwind Bleed Barb, okay? We're just taking Lunging Strike, two points just to get into Whirlwind. We are taking Whirlwind into Ferocious Whirlwind, okay? While using a slashing weapon, Whirlwind also inflicts 40% of his base damage as bleeding over five seconds. Now, you're never actually gonna use the Violent. We don't care about this because just like some of the other builds, Dot Builds, Blizzard, etc., we're not actually doing a lot of damage from Whirlwind. We are just applying the build, the bleed damage. So we are doing some very good damage with Whirlwind, but all of it's coming from bleed. Now, I know that it says Slasher Weapon. We're going to talk about some mace stuff in just a minute. But um, it's still a little bug, but I'll get to that when we get to the gear. We're going to do one point and a pressure point. This is just to help us make the enemies vulnerable, which is very important. Then we're going to come down and we're taking max ranks and imposing presence. And you'll get some more ranks on your gear for more max life. So we're super tanky. Uh, Martial Vigor for damage reduction. We're obviously going to be doing all three shouts in this build, what Barb doesn't for the most part. But we're doing Rallying Cry into Tactical Rallying Cry for Fury Gen and Resource Gem, which is huge. Iron Skin into Tactical Iron Skin for more as a barrier, just to help us stay uh, healthy longer. Challenging Shout into Tactical for we gain three Fury each time we take damage, which is huge because we're going to be up close and personal, right? Then we're going to come down and we're going to take War Cry into Powering War Cry. If there's at least six enemies, we deal 10% increased damage. This is also one of our uh, very important ways to become Berserking. Berserking damage is going to play a huge part in this build, guys. So War Cry grants us Berserking for four seconds, and then we get additional damage. Then we're taking Boomy Voice so they last longer. And then we're also taking Raid Leader to heal, especially if you're going to play Party Play. We're maxing out aggressive resistance for even more DR while we're berserking, which should be all the time, okay? Berserking should be up pretty much 100% of the time. While we're berserking, fury generation is increased by 18%, huge. Then we're gonna come down and we're taking points into pit fighter for increased damage. We're taking two points into slaying strike for increased damage against uh, injured enemies. And I personally, this is just a one little tweak I did, one point into no mercy, it just gives us that 3% extra crit chance. Now that my critical strike chance is actually high enough, I would probably take this out and put it into here. Or if you really, really wanted to, you could take it out into guttural yell and just keep it into pressure point just to have you know vulnerable enemies just be, just to make sure, right? They're even more vulnerable. It's totally up to you. Then we got one point into hamstring. So our bleeding effects slow, which is fantastic, which is another reason why that this would always be up. Like the crit, you could take this off, and the crit is just always going to be there because we're always going to slow. Um, then we got cut to the bone. Our bleeding uh, effects deal 15% multiplicative damage to vulnerable enemies. Huge. Then we got thick skin for more max life to fortify. And then we got while we're fortified, we deal 12% increased multiplicative damage. Our fortify should always be up. Then this is where things get a little tricky. We are taking Wrath of the Berserker. So that way, this is another way to keep our Berserking uptime and deal additional damage. But then we are mainly, you need to take points and max out heavy-handed. This is what scales our critical strike damage and allows us to do crazy damage with bleed. Now, our key passive is going to be gushing wounds. So the numbers, you know, you deal, you, you, when causing an enemy to bleed, you have a chance to equal your crit strike chance to increase your bleed damage by, or bleed amount by 140% of your critical strike 
damage bonus, okay? This is very important. This is why we need to have a high lucky, or excuse me, a high critical strike chance and high critical strike damage. Now, I do have three points in the wall up, okay? The reason that this is here is because there's a recent bug with the bleed variant of this build and being able to bleed enemies with the slashing weapon. Something is not working correctly, or at least it doesn't feel like it. So we had some members from uh, other communities and people came into my chat telling me I need to use a Mesa as opposed to the grandpapa. So I tried it, it kind of feels the same. It might feel a little bit better, but as a default, just use the sword um, and then you should be fine, okay? Now, if that is 100% fixed and not the case, we would uh, we would take wallop, the points out of Wallop and we would put them back into something else. We would probably put them into Warcry just for the cooldown, or we could put them into somewhere else, like more points in the pressure point. We could put more points into uh, Raid Leader, for example, or uh, I don't know, put more points in the thick skin or max out no mercy, etc. So there is some other options. I'm just going to leave it as is because this is what I was directed to do. So with that said, we I left it there. We've been testing it. The speed farms feel fine, maybe slightly better. But yeah, that is the gear, okay? Or excuse me, the skills. Expertise, always two-handed axe expertise, 10% multiplicative damage against vulnerable enemies. And we are going to be spinning with a two-handed sword, so we get the direct bleed. But again, I still think this is bugged from what I've understood. So with a two-handed mace... We get the chance to gain five fury and then double the amount while we're berserking and then we get 15 percent increased critical strike damage while we're berserking so it's still very good into the gear now there's a lot i got a lot of questions over this over the last couple days and there's a few different levels to this build this build in its most optimal form runs four uber uniques the grandfather starless skies Tyrael's might and shaco now if you don't have these you can take Tyrael's Might out, and you can run the Rage of Hargoth chest. If you do, That really helps with cooldowns. It'll keep the uptime on cooldowns much faster. If you don't want to run either one of those, you can use a regular chest piece with a power. You need Shaco, but if you don't have Shaco, then use a regular helmet. You could use God Slayer if you really wanted to. But I would highly suggest that you get Shaco, as well as the next one you 100% need is the Grandfather for this to work. Okay, this scales our critical strike damage insane by 100%, which is nuts. It makes the build really optimal. Solid Skies, you do not need. So in order of what you would need first, you need Grandpapa, Shaco, then Starless Skies, then Tyrael's Might if you want to run it. This is the most optimal. Otherwise, you can take these two away and be just fine. Okay, with that out of the way, let's go over the gear, of course. Shaco for more ranks, cooldown, damage, all that good stuff. Resource gen, fantastic. Tyrael's Might, just a, this Tyrael's Might really helps out with the resistance caps, which is very important. Uh, then also when we're spinning, you're going to be able to do an insane amount of damage with the while your life is at full, which you should be from all your fortify. You unleash a divine barrage, which as of today, guys, the Elixir of Holy Bolts is back working. So now this build is going to be even more insane. We're going to show a speed farming uh run on this video i hope it doesn't go too long i just love speed content over pushing in our gloves we are rocking elements the main thing is you want to get to critical strike chances and damage and damage while berserking it's very very important but we are running elements for that seven second swap we got iron warrior this is just going to uh, allow us to be unstoppable when we pop iron skin and give us even more dr most important stat on here is to make sure you have imposing presence and you need armor to help hit the cap Next on our boots, we're running Relentless Berserker. This is going to give us a lucky hit. Damaging an enemy with core skills has a chance to extend Berserking, and then you double if you crit. Our crit is very high. We have a very high crit chance. Mine's about 70%, and you're going to be able to just extend Berserking, which is very important in the build. Two-handed mace, we got Berserk Ripping. Again, very important here. You want to get the crits on the chance for Dust Devils to pop twice. All my gear is only at level 8, but you want to get that. Remember, guys, on all the weapons, to temper critical strike damage, you have to do that on a rogue, okay? Do that on a rogue. But we got Berserk Ripping. Whenever you deal direct damage, you inflict 60% of it as bleeding. Very important. Uh, the next one is Devilish. I always almost messed up some of the reading. After generating 100 Fury, your next direct damage creates two Dust Devils. Very important. Very easy to do. 
And then we got Fierce Winds. Our shout skills create three Dust Devils. And the Dust Devils are 20% bigger. So on your two swords, this is very important. You need to temper crit or Dust Devil size. You do not have to crit in Master Working for this. I did on the eighth roll here. I don't need it. Because as long as you have pretty close to max rolls, both of these at level 12 will be close to 100%. And then from the Fierce Winds, the extra 20% gets you to 100%. Uh, percent dust devil size which is very important to maximize the damage of the build next of course grandpapa starless skies of course and then we got bold chieftain this is just going to help us with our shout cooldowns and just allow us to keep those going up big up time and in the amulet we got dust devils for whirlwinds leave behind dust devils that do damage to enemies in their path very important on here is heavy-handed you need to crit heavy-handed i crit crit chance because I needed to crit at least once to really get to the breakpoints, but I ended up critting twice, so I'll end up keeping it. I hope I crit heavy-handed on the third one. Um, then, of course, you get your three different gems in here uh, to be able to hit your reses, right? Now, let's go over the Paragon board before we get into the last most important part of this build, and then we'll go do a quick showcase. Now, again, guys, the build link to all this is going to be down in the description below. I will say that this is the most fun that I've had besides Heartseeker. So we got Exploit for more damage to vulnerable enemies, Eerie for more damage while we're berserking, uh, Marshall to help with our shout cooldowns. We got Might for even more damage with two-handed weapons because that's what we're using. We got Wrath for more crit strike damage as well as strikes that critically strike. We generate three Fury. And then we got Twister for increased Dust Devil damage and increased damage after creating Dust Devils, which is very important. This will always be on an uptime. Now, a few things to note here is hemorrhage your bleeding damage is increased by 15 percent of your vulnerable damage mine's 40 percent right now and i'll explain why it it seems a little low the next and most important node is your uh blood rage node killing an enemy grants you berserking for five seconds your damage is increased by 10 percent the maximum to this is 30 percent this needs to be at 30 percent no matter what which is why on our gear pieces on I only did two pieces. That's all you should have to do on my gloves as well as my ring. I have or excuse, damage while berserking. You only need it twice, and that should really help you cap. Uh, next in the Paragon, I'm pretty sure those are the two most important ones. Yep, those are the two most important. Okay, so the next thing that I really had to have explained to me in great detail. So the way that Hemorrhage works in addition to your key passive is critical strike damage and vulnerable damage this needs to be 10 to 1 okay so for every for example for every 3000 critical strike damage you need to have 300 vulnerable damage because that's just way barbarian math works out to maximize the amount of bleed damage and damage you do with this build from what i have understood and discussed with the community if i am wrong about that guys please let me know down in the description below i would love to know because i'm really enjoying this build Heartseeker is the only build that I've taken to 12 Masterwork, so this may be the second one just because we've made so many builds, it's crazy. Um, but 10 to 1. Now, this is 10 to 1 before your pot. So if I put on the, or excuse me, the uh, precision pot, I am going to gain 35% more crit strike damage. However, the next important breakpoint is crit strike chance. At a minimum base, you have to have 60%. I am now over. And if I pop this, I go up to 69.4, and my crit damage is 33.42, which is still, it's slightly more than 10 to 1. This would be 334, roughly, 35. Uh, and But this is 319, so we're pretty much spot on. Now, how you achieve this is through your gems here, okay? That's why I have extra ones here for your sapphires and your emeralds. You These are interchangeable. You can swap these out however you need to to get the breakpoints from 10 to one, okay? Make sure you do this while the pot is not actually active. So that way, like I'm gonna put on Holy Bolts here because it is working. And that way you can really see, you can see how it, it goes up just a little bit, but this is dang near spot on. So that is the last thing, guys. We ended up getting another Starless from the, the Zer stuff, but let's go in and showcase this. I have been having so much fun speed farming and that's literally how I've been able to get all of my resources i'm low now because i just upgraded like four or five different sets like set pieces of gear on characters to level eight which was just been insane now 
When it comes to the pit farming on this build, it can definitely farm higher than what I'm about to show you. But 101 is a sweet spot, and this is what I farm. We do this in roughly a minute and a half, two minutes, which is fine. We're gonna. This is gonna be the very first time that I've done this with the Holy Bolt fix because I just got home from work. I got out late, which really sucks. I wanted to go live, but I got to get these videos out to you. So here we go. Let's go knock this out. This should be really, really fun. Uh, let's put on the sound and let's just blast. Let's go. The build is very simple to play, guys, for all those um, that are curious about playing Barbarian. It, all you do is pop all your shouts. You pop your Wrath of the Berserker and you just spin. Now, the key thing here is, is you want to tap your spin. You're going to see me tap and not hold. The reason for this is because... It's going to spawn Arterial's Might, and it's going to allow us to trigger that. You can't do that if you're just uh, holding it down, because it's every successful cast of your skills that trigger that. So as long as we tap it, we're okay to go. And you can see this build is just is just nuts. Um, oh, yeah, those three points. I remember where those three points go. They go into your movement speed. That's what they go into. You get the extra... You get the extra movement speed. But this build just absolutely shreds. We definitely could be much faster. You can see I'm using the hammer only because I was instructed because of the supposed bug of of uh, Grandpapa and the slashing weapons not working correctly with bleed. But either way, I've still done it with using the Grandpapa as the main weapon, and that is just perfectly fine. So... But definitely use the mace right now. That is what is suggested. So, but I haven't had more any more fun on here. I'm not even gonna grab lethal just so you guys can really just see how powerful it is. And again, we're just we're just spinning and winning, baby. That's it. We're just spinning and winning. This is the ultimate. You know, I thought that Heartseeker was gonna be the best farming build this season, but it's not even close. This build is just so much faster. So again, our most important uh, one here is Warcry. We pop that, get everything going. And the bleed damage should just be pretty insane. And we should get through these bosses a lot quicker. I wish that my um, that my gear was at 12 because we could definitely clear much faster. But sometimes it still feels like the bleed just isn't getting the, the maximum effect here. But that's okay. It's not a big deal. We still kill the boss pretty quickly. Um, apparently he's invulnerable right now, which is weird. All right, now he's dead. Easy peasy, guys. No problem at all at 101. And again, the reason we farm the 101 is because the HP starts to scale after that. 101 is the break point, guys. So no more having to farm T99s. But yeah, guys, this is spin to win. Grandpa Pom having an absolute blast with the build. So I wanted to bring you this guy and just showcase it, man. Big shout out to Rob, our barb master. Uh, I cannot even begin to understand how crazy Barb is, but playing this build, it's so much fun, guys. So like the video. Big shout out to Rob. Go check out his channel for the in-depth super guide if you want the min-max breakpoints. And don't forget to subscribe, guys. And as always, stay gaming. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.